Alright guys, welcome to the second video where I take a look at some computer and video game magazines. This week I'm going to look at probably one of the most uh, famous ones, it was called Computer and Video Games. Now I'm looking at Wikipedia at the moment and according to this it was uh, launched in 1981 um, and it ran right up till 2004 then apparently um, Ah, right, okay, yep, that's when the actual hard copy magazine stopped in uh, 2004, which would be, what would that be, 20, 23 years, that's incredible. And uh, then apparently after that, they launched a website which ran until 2015, but it said that uh, that uh, the computer video games was the longest running video game media brand in the whole world. Um, this the, the the one we're going to look at today is February 1985 with uh, Gremlins on the front cover. Um, like most computer uh, owners, I bought bought this magazine. It was the only magazine out there really. There was other magazines which were very very dull. There were more kind of businessy hardware, learning to program type stuff. Whereas computer video games is exactly what it says. It was mainly video games. Though it did have a bit of everything from type-ins to hardware look-ats to looking at the arcades and that kind of stuff. But it's a great magazine. Um, I wish I'd kept. I had ton, I must have had, I don't know, how many issues of the, the thing. But like a lot of people back then, you flung them out. Once you'd upgraded, you got rid of your magazine. So anyway, let's take a wee look and see what it's about. Excuse me. Now, I did do, uh, obviously you, you're aware, I did... Uh, this is the second uh, video I'm putting together looking at magazines. Uh, somebody did comment and say, can you not put the two uh, pages side by side so that way it looks like you're actually reading the magazine. So that's what I've done. Um, hopefully this will be better. I did originally do the single page because I thought if you're, if you're watching this video on a phone, then if you've got the two pages, you're not going to see it. But what I've done, as you can see there, I've actually zoomed right in. So hopefully you can you can see this. So anyway, yeah, let's have a look. Um, on the left hand side we have got, we've got an advert from uh, Elite. Cockatini Wolf, I remember that game, it was absolutely bollocks. Although saying that, it actually played not too bad. It didn't look the greatest, um, but it was actually quite a good little game. Juxy Hazard, I don't ever remember. Ah, you know what I did, I think I played it once. Um, it's a kind of driving type game. The Fall Guy, that was before uh, Lee Majors had all these, uh, these facelifts. It looks like she's been airbrushed to within an inch of her life. Yeah, um, how much was that? Spectrum £6.95, Commodore 64 £7.95. That used to always annoy me. Why did Commodore 64 owners have to pay an extra pound? You know, there's absolutely no reason at all. Right, what have we got feature wise? We've got Mailbag. Fifth column competitions. Cover Bob Wakelin. There you go. Eh? Good old Bob. Charts Adventure Bug Hunter. Who was producing it? Tim Metcalf. Heard the name. Certainly know the name. Anyone else that I'm familiar with? And I don't see anyone else. Oh, Sean Brennan. I remember him. He was he was in the uh, in that uh, industry for quite a long time. So, yeah, like contents, let's scroll on. Ah, lovely Interceptor software. Where do we begin with Interceptor? <laughs> ah, you can ring Mark or Terry. Can you imagine phoning, eh, uh, I don't know, who's, I don't know any of the bigwigs. Can you imagine phoning uh, the, the bigwig off EA? Can I speak to Mark, please? I want, to sp I want to talk to him about the new FIFA game. Yeah, that's when, that's when software companies were small and you could phone Mark or Terry direct. I wonder if I phoned that number. That looks like, you know, that looks like a mobile number. 07356. Maybe I should phone it just for a laugh, maybe not. So yeah, Interceptor software, Jules of Babylon. And then we have the, the mighty mailbag. <laughs> I've never actually found anybody that I know, uh, that I recognise. I know a few mates did right off to these in the past, in the past but Soren, well, that's always a made up one. Jeff Stones from Dronfield in Sheffield. I've got some great tips for Daily Thompson's decathlon. On a long jump, land just behind the white line and then watch the man with the tape measure go super bonkers. My base in a long jump is over 423 metres. Yeah, okay. Malcolm Perryman from Surrey. There's another guy from Surrey, Cedric Hubbard. I wonder if he's in relation to uh, 
to Rob. Right, let's have a look. Mega, mega save. Fantastic savings. Ghostbusters £8.50. Ghost, um, let's see if we can... Are they selling the C64 more expensive? Uh, I can't see any of the same games. Ghostbusters was £8.50. No, no, I see Spectrum and Commodore 64 were both £8.50. Ah, the Texas TI-99, that's where you could still get stuff for it. Attention, Commodore 64 users hire all, the hire all the latest games at the lowest prices here. £1 for 7 days. The Commodore, six or sorry, the Commodore Club. It sounds like, sounds like some uh, wife swapping uh, club. The Commodore Club. <laughs> Not that I would know anything about that, by the way. Yeah, discount software. See, they're selling... They're selling Ghostbusters for £8.50 and Mega Saver also doing it for £6.50. Yeah, might see Psy Warrior by Beyond. I need to do a needed what actually on Beyond Software. I was never a fan of any of their many of their games. Right, mail ga mail gag? Mail bag even. Do we recognise anyone? A Hayes Wordly Stowbridge. That's when people used to send in letters with stamps and things. Dear sir, I was rather disappointed with the editor's attitude to Mastertronics Games in his reply to Mr. I. Kaitling's letter, August issue. They aren't all that bad. I own a Commodore 64 and although I do own BMX racers, which had quite a bad review in that issue, I have seven of Mastertronics existing range of Commodore 64 games and at least six are of excellent quality. Especially Duck Shooting, yeah okay. Duck Shooter? Uh, good game or not? I don't know. And he's Scottish. Richard Conway from Lanarkshire. Wonder where he is. Don't think I ever actually wrote into a magazine. What's this? Commodore 64, uh, let's see, stones hidden in the Isle of Wight. Spirit of the Stones. There we go, there's a big double spread advert for Gremlin Graphics. If you've not got the Gremlins, you don't know what you're missing. I don't recall. I don't think I ever played any of these ones. Monty's Innocent. Was that before Monty on the run? I think it might have been. Suicide Express. Ah, see, bloody Gremlin were at it as well. Commodore 64, Monty Mole, £7.95. Spectrum, £6.95. Why are we paying an extra pound? Ah, Eddie Kid Jump Challenge. Shame for that guy, he's, he's now, he's disabled, I think he's now confined to a, a, a wheelchair following an accident that he had. It's actually quite a good game that, it was savagely difficult. And you can see there the Spectrum one is different, you can actually see all the screen mirrors the C64 went for huge big sprites. Well they probably went with sprites. Right, Grid Runner on the cheap. Here's a small word of warning. Ooh, for Atari, or Atari owners on the lookout for cheap software. Mark Hodson of Willem Hall, West Midlands. Dean Constable, Elm Wispitch. Yeah. Attic Attack map turns up trumps. Right, what's this here? Tinesoft. Bingo! A five-year-old or granny can play. Okay. Actually shouts the number out. There we go. What's this? The fifth column. Mike Singleton. Ah, okay. He's he was a software writer. What did he do? Did he not do uh, Lords of Midnight? Was it Domark's Revenge? I think it was. Yeah, you can see here this magazine. It had a bit of everything. I mean, here's a, a typing. Um, what's this going to do? Asimov fans will no doubt have already guessed that Selden's game takes its name for the authors. Blah 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 blah. That looks interesting. Fly Spectrum to Florida. A guided tour of the Kennedy Space Center and a visit to Disney World are just two of the things that could come your way if you enter the competition being sponsored by Spectrum Group and Commodore Computers. Yeah, as I was saying, the, 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 I mean, the Commod sorry, Commodore, computer and video games, it was it was one of the earliest, certainly the most popular multi-format magazine. It was probably one that most people will remember. Um, and I believe I actually ran right up to about 1998, 1999, which is a good run. 
consider it started very, very early 80s, so it was going for almost 20 years. Now Amstrad gives you over £100 to play with. Bridget, who cares? No. So you've got Hangman, you've got a fruit machine, you've got Bridget, you've got a, what do you call it, a spreadsheet thing for a processor. Rolling in the ropes, animal, vegetable, mineral. Oh mommy, yeah. Free when purchasing an Amstrad CPC 464. £239 with the green screen, or £349, so what would that be, an extra 90 quid? Yeah, you'd have been absolutely gutted if your mum and dad had bought you the green one. Mutant Monty, I remember that game, don't think I actually played it. Ah, there's Mike Singleton there. Yeah, I was right, Lords of Midnight, Domark's Revenge. Game news. Legendary package. The now infamous Great Space Race unleashed on the Christmas market for Spectrum and C64 owners will be distributed solely by Micro Dealer UK. Yeah, more Spectrum news. No, sorry, more games news. Anyone familiar with Frank Goes to Hollywood should be familiar with the proliferation of T-shirts. T T E E. Yeah, also spell checkers back then. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Frankie says relax. Yeah, blah blah. Frankie Goes to Bournemouth. Never seen that one. Yeah, Pirates in Parliament, let's see if we can read that. Anyone out there who enjoys pirating software should take note of the following. Under a proposed change in the law scheduled for next month, you could find yourself in jail or find a great deal of money. <laughs> yeah, that never happened. Ah, uh, there's the Mighty Automata, which was just a... They released a game called Deusex. Is that how you spell it? Deusex. Is it? Maybe it is. Dave sex? I thought it was spelled differently for some reason. Anyway, obviously not. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a quite a revolutionary. It wasn't even a game. It was more like any life simulator, and you had big names for the time. I mean, if you're under thirty, you've probably got no idea who any of these people were. Ian Jury, he was part of Ian Jury and the Blockheads, a rather good uh, punk band. John Pertwee was Wurzel Gummich, and he also played Doctor Who. Mel Croucher was. Sort of owner of uh, Automata. Donna Bailey, don't remember her. And Frankie Howard. What? Ooh, Mrs. Yes, uh, a long gone uh, comedian. Yeah. Sadly, it never done very much. It was it was just too different. It was really, can you, I don't know. I think it was. It didn't have the technology. You know, if it had, it, it could possibly be something that would work now. But uh, it was it was a brave, brave move, and you know it's, it's, it's great to see something different. But nobody wanted to look at a game like that. People wanted to play arcade games. Good bite. Let's see how much. Yeah, still selling Ghostbusters for eight pound fifty. So pretty much all the same. Nightmare. Who's that by? Tell you. I don't know. At least that one. Well, the program was, sorry, the, the poster was drawn by Steve Fox in 1984. Match day. Right, I'm just looking at the top there. Uh, <laughs> this, I've got 183 pages and I'm only on page 25, so I'll need to get a move on. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ocean always had really, really nice, nice, colourful uh, adverts. You'll notice a lot of it, the magazine was actually in black and white. I don't remember. It being in black and white, I always imagine it to be uh, in colour, but it obviously wasn't. Yeah, what's this? Extra bits. So, like I was saying, it, it was a magazine that covered everything from hardware reviews to adventures to arcades, which we'll come to later on, and you've got hardware reviews. Oh, I've just said that, hardware reviews and other bits and pieces, type-ins. And... Right, let's have a crack at the crossword. Get rid of program errors. Debug, possibly, is it? Poison Dwarf M3. I've got no idea. Ah, oh, wait a minute, yeah. I'm mean, at number three, going across American soap opera and computer game. That'll be Dallas. D A L L. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, no, sorry, yeah, Dallas. And then Poison Dwarf. Go down the way. 
Ah, Lucy. Yep, Lucy. She was in Dallas. There you go. Right, what's all this? There's a, there's a lot of adverts in these uh, magazines as well. Beachhead. Cassette, £8.95. See, look at that. I mean, that's just bullshit. Beachhead on cassette for the Spectrum, £6.95. Commodore, £8.95. Why are we paying two pounds more? They're all two pounds more, which is just that is bullshit. Yeah, Ghostbusters. What's this here? Competitions. Ah, what was that called again? Three, was it 3D Death Chase, 3D. No, Death Star Interceptor. That's actually quite a good game. It's got speech as well. It's quite a good little, uh, it looks like Star Wars, but it's got more, it's more in common with Galaxian. Gift from the Gods, that was actually quite a good game. That was one of the first games to be programmed by the sort of X-Imagine team as well. Again, it never, I don't think it ever came out for the Commodore 64, don't know why. Yeah, there you go, number one blockbuster from the Mega Team. I loved how <laughs> software companies just made their own boasts. The Mega Team. Survivor on the Amstrad by Anarog out in a limb. I remember, uh, ah, see, there we go. What'd you call it? Flight Path 737. That's the game that I love the music. Don't remember that one. Moon Buggy did have that one. Scramble, that was one of my favourite games actually by Anarog. Ah, there's Mr. Jeff Minter. Psychedelia, a light synthesizer. And he's still putting out stuff like that. Yeah, always he always had really really nice. I think it was is it Mo Warden? I think it was. It was a, a lady that did the the uh, adverts and covers for uh, Lamasoft. The Sharp MZ seven hundred over one hundred forty programs. Is that the same company? Does that? It's no solo software. Right, let's see how. We, uh, I can just about make that out. Can we see Ghostbusters in that at all? Let's have a look and see how much. Now they only sell uh, Commodore and Atari stuff. Too small the writing anyway. Cyclone, lovely game. What did I get? Graphics 9, 8, 9 and 9. Rally Driver, don't remember that one. Cad Cam Warrior, again that was by... I'm not going to... I'm not going to go and look, it was by... Oh, bloody hell, Jet... Not Jet Set. <laughs> task Set. Task Set. Does it tell you? There we go. Task Set, the bug stops here. Really, really eye-catching logo for Task Set. They did my fav favourite Commodore 64 game, uh, Pipeline. Always really, really nice ad there, so really eye-catching. Reviews, Boulder Dash and the Spectrum. Yes. Again, this was back in the day when you fitted about you know two or three reviews on one page. Battle Zone Tank Joe, what did that get? Eight, nine, okay, then I'll pin it against 3D Tank Joe. That looks quite nice, actually. That looks actually looks really like the arcade one. Volcano. I need to do a an arcade perfect actually for uh, for Battle Zone. Dark Star, remember the name, don't remember anything about it. Combat Links and the Commodore 64. I always found that too complicated to play. Ah, there's Alligator Software. That was the, the company that Tony Crowder first worked on Hyper Circuit. Don't remember ever playing that one. There we go. Talk of the Devil. Ah, so he must have. He'd moved. That's right. He moved from Alligator, and he's now writing for Quicksilver, Black Thunder, or Loco, or no Griffin. What was the other one? There was three brought out. They're all almost identical. Suicide Express, Black Thunder, and Loco. Um, Suicide Express was almost identical to Black Thunder. I don't know what the difference was actually. Fighter Pilot, that was a, an early game on the C64. Oh, what was it what were they called again? Shoot the Rapids, I remember. New Generation Software, they brought out a game called uh, Jonah Barrington's Squash. It was actually quite a good game. Cliffhanger, 
that was quite an underrated game. It was actually really, really nice graphics and it was quite good fun to play. Don't remember. I think I played Shoot the Rapids, but it was actually quite dull. It was like a, what was a, a canoe simulator. Right, what's next? Talent computer games. You can see there there were just so many different companies making software. Not like nowadays, you've got EA, you've got Activision. You know, that's about your lot. <laughs> so many software companies. Stellar 7, I remember buying that on the Commodore 64. Now, sadly, the visuals look nothing like that. It actually played not bad, considering it was uh, vector based. Well, it wasn't vectors. Vectors requires a special display. It was line, line graphics. It actually wasn't a bad game. Right, Frack. Now, my mate Ian Boffin, he actually did the graphics for. Ah, uh, this is the. This is the Commodore 64 one. I'll need to do a an 8-bit kerfuffle on this one actually, Frack. Quite a good game, quite difficult. Here we go now, we're talking Raid Over Moscow. Yeah, that's that's just taking the piss. Beachhead, now available for Spectrum, £7.95. Available on cassette for C64, £9.9, so two quid, not even one pound difference, two pounds. Where was that two pound going? I would really like to know, I would like to, if I ever get a chance to interview, um, in fact, you know what, I'm hopefully going to be talking to Gary Bracey, I'll need to actually get in touch with him again. Um, I'd be interested to know why they felt they could sell Commodore 64 games more than the Spectrum. I used to always think, well, it's got less memory, so it's going to take less time to program, but I don't think that would be the case at all. I think they were just basically, they were probably thinking, well, Commodore 64 is more expensive to buy, so people that can afford to buy it probably have more money, therefore we can get more money out of them. I don't know. And one of the many interfaces for the Spectrum. What does this give us? The new Protocol 4 interface with ZX Spectrum brings you game control customising in a way that no other interface can except all commercial standard joysticks and is compatible with all Spectrum software. Ah, right, okay, so that's quite good. Which is Cauldron? Microgen. Don't remember that one. Moving down Professor Video's gaming workshops. Right. What's this? Atari 400, 600, 600XL owners, are you envious of the support other machines receive? Yes. Would you like to learn a lot more about your machine and find out what software and support is available in the UK? Yes. It's easy. Subscribe to page 6, the magazine for Atari users. I wonder why they went for page 6. Presumably there was already magazines called page 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5 already taken. That must have been it. Indiana Jones... Kingdom, don't remember that one, it looks shite anyway. I bought this game, Alien, um, on the, the C64, and I was really disappointed with how it looked, it looked shit. But apparently it's actually quite a good game, but I didn't have the patience or the skill to actually play it. Sigourney Weaver, eh? Here he Floppy disks. Right, let's see what was... I'm not even going to attempt to turn this around. In the charts, it was Daily Thompson's Decathlon by Ocean. Ghostbusters was in second place. Nightlore Elite. Daily Thompson's Decathlon on the C64. Booty. Backpacker's Guide to the Universe. Beachhead. Chiller. Cyclone. Eh. Interesting to see that. Right, what's this? Adventure. I always... and I was never ever remotely interested. An adventure but, uh, section, so I always skip past it. Ah, there's the mighty Mr. Toms. I was fortunate enough, enough to talk to Kevin about six months ago. Um, if you're interested, just do a wee search on my channel, Kevin Toms. You'll find, you'll find him there. He's uh, currently working on this for Android and iOS. Great game. I love this. Well, <laughs> I loved how it always had uh, actual, you know. It had actual like uh, comments by real people. And Kevin, Kevin, Kevin did state that you know, yeah, he used to get letters and he used to publish genuine sort of comments. 
Now let's see if Kevin was all. He was a cheeky monkey as well. He was selling the Commodore 64 one. But there you go, the Spectre one was a pound less than every other. Oh, the poor dragon. <laughs> they only paid £5.95. The BBC. See, the BBC Model B should have paid about £13 because they were all they were all rich people that had them. Yeah. Ah, that was that was a software star. That's actually quite a good game as well. But yep, there you go. The mighty football manager. Space shuttle. Bug hunter. Ah, I remember this, but again, I was never interested in programming. Dear bug hunter, since the release of White Lightning, which was actually a, it was a software piece of software you can get to program, we have been endeavouring to provide our customers with the best possible support. You may be interested to learn that there are now two official user groups in the UK which offer help, advice and newsletters to all White Lightning. Isn't White Lightning a cider? I think it is. Let's see if we recognise anybody again. No. Mr. S Mr. Scroff from Slough. Uh, Castle of Terror. That was a great game. Great game. Never got that far in it. It's a graphic adventure, but it had really, really good music as well. Really atmospheric stuff. That was by Melbourne House. Right, I'm going to have to start going a bit quicker because this is going to go on and on and on. This is Wickle Joysticks. Ah, there's a mighty boss. They made the best joysticks, bar none. I would love to get my hands on this one here. I can't remember what it was called again, but they go for daft money. F15 Strike Eagle, they made some great games. Solo Flight, really good game. It's funny how, I mean, that advert, like picture there, I, I can remember seeing that. Micronet, that was basically the internet. Now, see what I was saying here, this is interesting. This was, they also covered arcade games. Now, this would be, was this 1984, 1985? I can't remember. What games are we looking at here? And we've got Hyper Sports, well, that's actually track and field. That's track and field there, that's hyper sports. What on earth is that? That looks like, let me just zoom in for a second. I don't know what that is, that looks like tug of war or something, isn't it? If anyone knows what game that is, let me know. Ah, it was made by Tato. You can just make it out there. Interesting. Yeah, right, let's go back again. Is that it? Not one more there, we'll go back again. And we've got Nintendo Golf. Defender, how to stop the action. Oh, really? To freeze the action on Defender, you must get all the humanoids underneath you and put them all on the planet's surface. As long as you keep your fingers off the thrust button, the game stays still. Oh, I never knew that. When you press thrust, the game starts playing again. There you go. Ah, hang on. Galaga. Make all the bugs stop dropping bombs for the entire game. On the first screen, shoot all the aliens except for the bug on the bottom left side. For the next 5 to 20 minutes, let it fly around while you dodge the bullets. It will then stop shooting. Let it pass by four times and shoot it. <laughs> there you go. Give that a shot, actually. Yeah, there, yeah, excellent. I'm going to actually, I'll need to have a look at that and give that a go. Manic Miner. What is this? It's hard to tell, actually. We have Spectrum Amstrad, BBC Dragon, Commodore 64, Aura Catmus, and the MSX. Brother, ah, so this was originally, I can't remember who released it originally, uh, but obviously. Software projects must have got the like broader bun software. There you go. I should have known that. BC's Quest for Tires, another great game. Project Future, don't remember that one. I've got some more. Dies Babies, <laughs> Dies Baby. Two of the latest platform games of the C64 are loosely based on the royal family and Prince Harry. <laughs> yeah, you got history. History review this or a history lesson than you with computer magazines. Jump challenge, there we go, that's the, uh, the C64 one. Right, graphics, you don't give an overall graphics, 8. See, the Spectrum's getting 8 as well, I would disagree, I think this, the C64 one looks way better than that one. 
Give my regards to Broad Street, that was uh, a rather awful film. I've never seen it, but I heard it's absolutely god awful. Some more reviews, Cy Warrior, Grand Prix in the BBC. Position, I'm guessing that should be pole position, is it? I think that should be pole position. Mutant Camels, I'm guessing that's Attack of Mutant Camels. Sega Arcade winners, yeah I loved all these games. I think I bought them all actually. I was never keen on uh, up and down too much. Right now, but. Yes, System 3. What have we got? Motocross, Suicide, Strike. Don't remember any of these. There's a young Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thor. Was it Thor? Not Thor. It would be uh, Conan. Don't remember that. Playing that one at all. And there's an iconic Ultimate Play the game. Really, really nice uh, covers. I wonder how much the original artwork for these would go for. Absolutely silly money. There's some tips on Domark's Revenge. From Games Workshop, yeah. I always felt that this magazine got more boring. The further in you got to it, the more boring it became. Arcade favourites, Pac-Man and Mr. Do. And Dig Dog as well. Yeah, it's all... Film fantasy, see that, it was a bit of everything actually, it wasn't just games. Right, here we go, Mr. Richard Thorpe. He got 99,000 in planetoids. He looks about six years old. Let's see if I can recognise anybody. Um, old mate Andy Lowe was a bit of a, is indeed a bit of a, Good games player, but I don't know whether he would actually send anything in. Um, Paul Munoz and that. Don't recall. James Cameron, before he went on to bigger and better things, was playing video games. Anthony Roper. Jonathan Pierce. I wonder if that's the guy that does the uh, the football commentary. Marcus Cornwell scored eight twenty-eight million. On Manny Miner, is that even possible? There we go, a really good, what was it called again? The Silica Shop, they sold all Atari stuff. All the hardware you could possibly want. Right, what's next? Starfighter, this is another competition. Now here we go, and I see, let's have a look at the, we also had a, an ads for sale. Let's see, Commodore 800XL, recorder, disk drive, joystick, £440 worth of original software, under guarantee, so box worth 840 sell for 440 quid. Um, Spectrum 48K, software, da 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 165 quid. I wonder if there's anyone selling a Jupiter race. Probably not, because nobody wanted to buy one. There's a VIC-20, how much is that? Oh, it's just VIC-20 software. Atari 100XL, yeah. Atari 100 Plus, is this wanted? I don't know what it is, Atari 100 Plus. Disk drive, all base software available. Give me a reasonable offer. Phone at 6.30 to 6.30 to quarter to 8 at night, weekdays. I might just give him a wee phone and see how much he's asking for it. Right, moving on, Cockatini Wolf, there's a... There's some tips. Flights of Fantasy. Sentinel. Mm, I, I was never really keen in that game at all. You see there's a kind of 3 it's almost like Star Wars but with big sprites. Blue Max, a lovely game. Drelves is a game I love. Fort Apocalypse, awesome game as well. Night Lore, always had a lot of uh, respect for people that actually made magazines. That is not a good choice of colour against that background, I can hardly read that. Repairs for all computers and TV games, good rates, ensure delivery, fast turnaround. Trust the people who know. Texas T1, TI99, top quality games and TI Basic, Boozyville. Alcoholic Alan, uh, dig it, 
Galaxios and Alien Madness. Atari owners. Atari 400 600 be one of the first to try out the very latest releases for the most comprehensive selection of the best and most popular games available on cassette. Yes. I'm still looking for the game, the very first game I ever owned, which was called uh, Core, C O R E, oh, and that was it was on the Texas. And there's a there's a company there, Shakespeare Street in Glasgow, no less. I don't see. Of course, I I got my C64. I got my uh, Texas. It was probably two years before this came out. I remember seeing that picture as well. Bug Hunter. Atari software. Coupons, whatever that is. Super supplement. Hey look everybody, the hairy one has just come back from holiday and he's about to he's going to tell you all about his amazing experiences among Peruvian llamas. There's nice iconic my mate Dave Campbell goes on about uh, you know the, the artwork in some of the magazines and games and that's really nice. I like that a lot. Okay, ad advertisement index. Merry Christmas, Santa. Arcade fun is Santa delivers presents. Uh, no, thank you. Ah, I remember seeing that Alice in Wonderland. That was a very, very early game. I don't know what it was about though. What's this book of games? Right now we're into uh, we're into typing stuff. This was what we used to do when we were kids. We used to actually sit and, well I wasn't a kid, we used to sit and type all this in. And invariably it would never work. Now I'm just curious as to see, there was very rarely any for the Commodore 64. Spectrum, Spectrum, Electron, Electron, that's still Electron, Electron, I mean, look at that, that would have taken you hours, Vic 20. Oh, they go. They've got one called Diver. Planet Lander Part One on the Vic Twenty. Planet Lander on the Vic Twenty Part Two. Chopper Command. Even in the Dragon, that gets games. Where's Where's the Commodore Sixty Four? The Dragon. That's Chopper Command again. Yep. Bricky on the Spectrum. So the, the Spectrum's got is that two or three so far. Bricky Spectrum. Purple Turtles. Sorry, Turtles on the BBC. BBC. Purple Turtles still. World War on the BBC. Still the same World War on the Spectrum. They got a third game. Cosmic Pyramid. Oh, there's a Commodore 64 one called Pipeline. Now let's just see how big that one has been. So there's one, two pages. That's not too bad I suppose. But you, you can imagine typing all this shit in. Mutant Mushrooms in the Texas as well. What was a, a clone of a, a clone of Centipede and Yahtzee, a game that nobody wanted to play. At least you could actually read that one. It's nice and clear. Yahtzee again. Right, that's uh, that is the last page. So that is that is the mighty computer and video games. It was a great magazine. Um, it was out for years. It was probably the longest running magazine. I don't know if there's any magazines that have ran longer. Unlikely because I mean it's been going for twenty. It was going for about twenty odd years. But a great magazine. Um, it says it had everything, you know, um, and that's why it remains so popular. I think once the sort of the dedicated magazines came out like Zap, and Spectrum, I think you found that the computer and video games started to suffer a wee bit. But they certainly had a good run. So anyway, guys, that is it. If there is a particular magazine you want to see me talk about, just put your comments below and I'll see what I can do. Okay guys, as usual, thank you very much for watching.